Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Well, it's time to take global stories making headlines in our national dailies. And joining us to review the papers is Chris Kende Wondu. He's a member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK and is joining us from the Center of Excellence, Abuja. Good morning, Chris. Thank you for joining us. I like yes, that smile. Well, <laughs> Good morning. It's nice joining you this morning. It's lovely to have you. Okay. Is Abuja the center of excellence or Lagos? Oh, Lagos is the center of excellence. Abuja is the seat of power. The land of aquatic splendor. <laughs> yes. Yes. I beg your pardon. Uh, well, he's joining us from the seat of power. Anyways, let's begin with the papers this morning. Um, the Guardian is the paper we'll be starting with. And this leads by saying households groan over food prices as inflation defies interventions. Now, a similar headline is also on the Vanguard. It says more pressures on pockets as food inflation rises to 40%. And the writers on this one says high electricity tariff to drive further rise. Analysts, um, and then it's bad for business, that has been said by Nasima, small businesses to lose capital base, and that's by Asbon. So with all of this, I mean, we're seeing inflation get up to 33%. I mean, just a few weeks ago, it was about 29.9%, but now inflation is even on an all-time high again. Now, the dollar you know, is almost about 1,000 Naira, and they said it should be less than 1,000 Naira really soon. Um, a few weeks ago, it was as high as 1,900. So we've seen the Naira gain strength, but then it's not reflecting on the um, prices of goods and services in Nigerians. And so I want to just get your take on all of this with food inflation becoming so high. Yeah, I think what we've taken from probably is just taking our eyes off on and concentrating more on the dollar. And um, yes, the dollar is appreciating as it were. And, um, uh, good news on that area uh, that no matter the level of appreciation, if this does not reflect in the pockets of Nigeria and on, on the goods and services, the prices of goods and services as it were, then I don't think they're making a big profit. What on average Nigeria want to see is reduction in the uh, prices of commodities, the prices of yam, rice, beets, tomatoes, you know, um, meat, fish, and all the necessary especially food items. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, then we can now start talking of other issues like housing, clothing, uh, and the others. But basically, food items and the uh, hungry man is a man. So, if we cannot be able to provide food for a TV population of over 200 million, and uh, then we are almost like a fake nation. And that is why I think we have to concentrate its effort, not just on the uh, But it seems that uh, it's going to be lost. Uh, why am I saying that? It's going to the price of food as well as it get to us with the increase in electricity. We got this point uh, where we are now when the federal government uh, of President um, Bernard Mendo, though he said that it was removed by the prior administration, but it was the president's current president that made an announcement on May 29th that removal of subsidy um, on petroleum products. And that in itself has super spiral effect. And by now, of goods and services, just like the petroleum subsidy that was removed um, and was increased to almost, if not over 300 percent, prices of goods and services are increased even more than that to close to 500 percent. And funny enough, uh, if you look at some of the headlines today, the former governor of, um, of um, Kaduna State, Europa, is saying that we are paying more for all this subsidy now than ever before. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to look at this contradiction. So the only subsidy, the only opportunity the subsidy that was removed, which was what the government hints, uh, um, uh, hints on to be able to say that oh, life will be much better for Nigeria, so we are not having a great price, that there, there, there's no that uh, subsidy are being removed. But if what we are hearing is that that subsidy is even far, far more, yeah, we are paying more now than it was a, 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 on the 29th of May 2023. There's something is wrong somewhere. Our commanders are not really the impact of this subsidy removal. I will back to the days of uh, Jonathan where people are just pocketing and pocketing money from this oil subsidy and they tell you that they are transporting tankers and uh, tons of ships of uh, petroleum products and they are waiting for them to uh, you will not see any evidence to show that and they collect money and put their pocket. So, this is a, 
a fundamental challenge to the federal government as we are. Yes, as I said, uh, inflation has raised to close to over, if not over 30 percent, and interest rate is not even smiling at all. Look at our interest rate. Then you can see that most Nigerians, uh, the SMEs cannot even assess um, billions and uh, from the banks, and that in itself is so much problem. Now we are hearing that the national grid has collapsed again, probably mm -hmm. between. 2000, uh, between 2000, uh, I don't know how many thousand now we have. We have been struggling uh, with 4,000 uh, megawatts for how many years now? Now, this is the, another national grid collapse. And that thing is, uh, is adding more problem to Nigerians. And I hope that the federal government is up and running and able to take care of some of these challenges that the okay. Nigerians so are not smiling at all. So let's just stay on inflation a little bit. Now, in the past, people have always blamed the dollar and said, you know, they've said that, oh, because the dollar is reason, um, that's the reason why um, prices of goods and services are so expensive. But now we've seen the dollar come down um, to a significant amount. Why are people still selling for as high or even higher than what it used to be before? Shouldn't there be some regulatory body to ensure that, you know, the prices of things are, you know, affordable for Nigerians? The law has nothing to do with the price of goods and, goods and services in Nigeria. Gondra is not our domestic currency. So anybody that is talking because of dollar, what do we do with the When you go to the market, do you buy with dollars? If you go to buy paper and to make us a... a, a, a Mr. Kelly, the woman on the street selling yam will tell you dollar has gone up. That's the reason why my prices have gone up. So it's just the mentality that everyone has. But everything seems to be everything seems to be connected. Yes, because, you know you import a lot of things. Maybe the um, the fet um, the um, fertilization that you use, the machinery. You know, a lot of things are being imported, and so because these things go up, there's a ripple effect to the prices in the market. And I'm telling you, even when they say that we that are more educated than most of you should be, the problem is that our production line is low. When you talk about food items and food production, our production line is low. People are not going to the farm again. That is the issue. I'm going to be hearing that people are being killed on a daily basis in the farm and being adopted. So mm -hmm. people are not going to the farm. So, area is not producing. Uh, crossing our states uh, and are supposed to be a bed for uh, you know uh, an avenue for also for some major crops including that of rice and um, so most of the northern states are not producing no mm. so so then we have serious security we, we have security and we have food security problem that is where the issue is mm. now even if you produce people are finding it difficult to be able to bring those things to the city because of course of petroleum and this you know, those are the issues what we have going to Dollars. That's what I'm saying. They are going to do the dollar. So until we do the fundamentals, this is a problem that can feed itself and not have, and also feed many West African countries. But are we doing the right thing? What is our level of production in terms of agricultural products? We are not producing enough, and that is it. Yeah. And we cannot be able to feed ourselves. We need to have like this. For every people are just moving it across the border. We saw how many um, the, um, trailers and trailers of food items that were being that were intercepted by the uh, customs, so few weeks start getting out of Nigeria towards the regime. So those are the issues that is well. So the fundamental has to be done dollars for goodness sake. That is not that is not the issue. The history is that we are not producing more people are not going to the farm and we need to increase our capacity. These days of I say it's few weeks ago, these days of just carrying home and the customers are going to the farm and saying people are farming. That is not the farming has got beyond that. We have to go into natural, big time, mechanized farming as a few dollars over the world. Where we can cultivate enough to be able to feed our bed. What we are having now is food security. We are having serious uh, food shortages across Nigeria, and that's what is what is telling on Nigeria. That's why I have the prices of uh, what has the price of uh, dollar going to do with pepper and tomatoes. But of course, that definitely has to do with that. Anyone that tells me that, but I will not believe that. So, why you are focusing on making sure that the dollar is coming and the federal government also should make sure that we are able to look at um, food items because the base, most Nigerians cannot be able to pay themselves. Every other thing that they need them is just like um, it, it, it's just like talking, uh, speaking to each as we say in the past. That is the situation. Our what let me what has the Minister of Agriculture said about the problem we have on ground. I've not heard from the Minister of Agriculture till now. 
saying any hey, do we even have a minister of agriculture? I don't even know his name. Minister of Water Resources, what is he saying? Minister of Finance, what is he saying? So those are the issues as at where are we giving those to farmers to be able to make sure that they're able to go to the farm and be able to produce enough. Look at even um, um, when it comes to the issue of poultry product, when it comes to the issue of um, um, meat, when you talk on the issue of fish, we are talking of egg, and all the basic, those that we do import, we are talking about, do we import uh, rice and baby, do we import um, um, uh, pepper and tomatoes from us? No, 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 it does, that is not the issue. So, I Mr. Chris, you, you, are talking, you are talking about my constituency, <laughs> the farmers. <laughs> let me just say what i always say here everything is connected if you have a liter of herbicide it used to go for 1000 and 1500 tops now it's going for 5500 a bag of fertilizer used to be 10,000 naira but because of the import and all that because of the dollar that they're saying it's now sold for at least 60,000 naira from 10,000 15,000 to 60,000 from uh, 1,005 of uh, um, the liter of herbicide to, to 5,500 naira and all that. So if you factor in these things, even the people who are able to go to the farms are finding it difficult. <clears throat> There's a tiller that is handheld. It can help you do a lot of work more than the hoe. You know, they used to buy it for like uh, 250,000 naira. Now it is 950. In some places, it's 1.1 million. So how do you look at all those things and you still say that the farmers uh, there's no relationship with the pepper if you're planting pepper in your farm you need you need insecticides to make sure that the pepper uh, is not well, yeah. yeah it grows well and all that. So I, now what i'm saying is that i i understand what you're saying but dollar seem to be one kind of trade that ties everything together yes. in nigeria so whether we like it or not it's being Every institution, every part of our economy is being influenced by, by the rise and fall of dollar. Especially because we import a lot of things. Yes. These so herbicides are being imported. Yes. The fertilizers are being imported. The machinery are being imported. Everything exactly. else. And even if you're not importing that, your child wants to go to school and your child cannot eat solid, very solid food in the morning. He has to eat maybe noodles mm -hmm. that you cannot buy because it's being, being uh, imported. So you will sell your yam mm -hmm. to make sure you can buy you the noodles. You can afford the noodles. So, this well, is, I'm just uh, saying. Let me also bring it down. Uh, uh, see, I'm not listening to you. Now let me bring it down to us. I'm just you're asking your question. Now the dollar used to be 1,900. Mm. Now it's by half. It's 1,000. Naira to a dollar. So why? How come that the food prices are not going down? That's the question That's we're the question asking. asking. That's the question That's we're asking, asking this morning. Is, but why are we fixated at the food prices? We are not talking about the reason why the food prices rose. Dollar has come down, but the herbicides I mentioned have not come down. Yes. The fertilizer has not come down. Goods and services have not come, have not come down. Not come so down. why are we looking at what the I'm food? Saying, what I'm saying, listen, we are even talking. Let me even talk about fertilizer. We don't have to import fertilizer. Don't you have you forgot that we used to have NAPCON and all those fertilizer companies in Nigeria? And they are not there. And you ask why they are not working. You are, you are, you are, it's your constituency, and I give that to you. But what I'm asking is that maybe one company in Nigeria that's not producing fertilizer. Why are we not producing fertilizers? Exactly. Exactly. Is, we don't to, exactly. We don't so to because do. of that, we're now depending on the dollar. So it's not the farmer's so, fault. That's what I'm trying to say. It's not actually 100% well, the it? farmer's no. fault. No, I didn't say, no, no. I didn't say it's from my sport. Okay. They are not listening to me. I never say it's from my sport. I'm telling you that the farmers are not able to grow more because of certain things. Yeah. And I've told you that of security. Mm. Provide security. I've said that. People yeah. go to the farm and they can, how many people go to the farm and they that plateau state? Even your own state. They, they will now have they the highest, has the highest, food, the highest inflation. food inflation, even the basket of the nation. Yes. Is, is even my state of Imo, how many people are going to the farm? Because they are afraid that they'll be kidnapped, they'll be killed. That's what I'm saying. So True. there are so many factors. That are, 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 and I told you the issue of petroleum mm. and also and, and diesel. If they get this product from your from your state of Brussels to move those products from the from the uh, from those it's a problem. to to Calabar, do you know how much they're going to pay? Uh, so, so Chris, so Chris, now, so, now that uh, the other headline is saying Dangote is going to be buying uh, crude in Naira, do you see any any hope because of that? 
Because even the marketers are proposing 550 naira per liter to Dangote, and I wonder how that is. So if he's going to be buying crude with naira, do you think there will be an improvement? Where is the crude? That's the question. It's the same crude that Dangote is exporting from US, that they say is exporting from the US. Well, we don't even have enough to be able to meet our um, okay. um, OPEC quota. Yeah. I'm sure you are aware of that. Yes. Good. So what are we... So it's still more that. That is why... So this is an interwine for goodness sake. So totally, I totally agree that, oh, Dangote buying crude in Naira is a good thing. If this crude is available. Now, the potato refinery that ought to have been going into production for how many weeks now has not been. That was also supposed to bring down our level of importation of petroleum products. But is it, is it working? So if we cannot be able to have enough food to be able to supply Dangote refinery, that means that Dangote, the same money you say you want to save by the with the Naira, Dangote is going to pay dollars to be able to bring in this food oil. And those are the problems. So, and we have... But we have I, I don't know what is we happening. When we Sorry. didn't have a Dangote refinery, we were exporting crude and bringing back petrol and all that. Mm -hmm. Now we have a refinery here. There's no crude for him. Or, or is it that it has been used for other purposes? No, you know, there's speculations that, you know, our crude has even been sold no. in advance. So we don't oh, have no. enough as of right now. Oh, dear. No, no you have to know. Let me, for that, you have to know that we already had some of, most of our crude, we have used it to collect money. Yeah, from, as collateral. Yes, I'm sure you know that. Mm. And I heard that it's going to last for about six to eight months. I don't know whether that has lasted. When it's going to last. So for night, whatever you are producing now, you don't, you don't collect the money, chop them. So you are just supplying. <laughs> Mr. Chris, who is the owner? <laughs> 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 now, now, now. Remember the owner? I was... The one that said that. You said I was, uh, I'm, I'm out of the place. I'm not owing. I said that, I said the average Nigerian. Mm -mm. Now, now, now you have a. Mm -mm. You, you have <laughs> I'm a not part of the Una. I never sold no crude. Okay, so let's just talk about the. Um, collapse of the national grid because that's also on the headline so on the guardian it says national grid suffers third collapse was since 20 hours per target um on the punch it leads with vandalism worsens grid collapse as gas shortage slashes power supply the riders here says tcn Discourse blame gas shortage, vandalism for frequent collapses, firm begs customers. Um, TCN plans fresh investment in power infrastructure as grid collapses sixth time in 2024. And I know I was saying it's, you know, I think elastic or something, and we're just talking about how the grid collapses every other day. And I, and, I, and I said every other month, yeah. but now we're seeing this happen time and time again. And six I, times. This is six times yeah, in 2024. In 2024, yeah, that's in the what. Fourth month, is it? Exactly. And is that, so, so what's happening with our infrastructure time. of the power sector? Yeah. Why can't we just have a grid that works? Come on, we, we supply electricity to some countries. We are the giant of Africa. In fact, I remember during the AFCON, the um, South Africans were laughing at us saying we're a generator Republic. republic. So why are we saying this? Is this a case of vandalism, as you know they've said, or is it just a case of the government not doing enough? So there are ministers say we should shoot off our fridge <laughs> and our and, uh, and uh, air conditioning. Yeah. And that is what is consuming, what is consuming uh, electricity. <laughs> we are switched off. We should be switched off. Why is it this collapsing? So that's, those are fundamental issues. The fact is that we are not doing what we, what we need to do. I said it when I in my opening that we are hovering between three to 4,000 megawatts of uh, electricity in Nigeria. That is what over two, 230 million Nigerians are sharing. And I said it on this program um, sometime ago that South Africa, we far far lesser um, um, population, have over 60,000 megawatts of power. Mm. And they, come, they are still complaining you know, at 60,000. That is not enough for them. So when you look at that, the basic, the fact is that the infrastructure is not there. The basic infrastructure is not there. That is why it's collapsing. Most of these grids, natural grids, have been in existence since 1960, even before 1960. And nothing has been done to change them. Yeah. Now we generate. The problem also is that we generate as much as we can generate as much as our five I've said it also on this program that 
that what the 5,000 you generate, you cannot put on the national grid because they cannot be able to take it. The national grid cannot take more than 4,000. So if you push, try to push about 5,000, which is what the Jenkins generate, what they generate, then you just push it to the it will collapse. The next thing they will tell you, oh, it's, uh, uh, it's gas. Oh, we are not supplying gas enough. Oh, uh, there was bad, that is and rest of Everybody is going hydro. How many hydropower plants do we have in Nigeria? Even the one that, that um, we recently in the Mandela said that we mm -hmm. almost completed. We heard that we cannot even move it from the, from the generation into the national grid. So those are the issues. And until these issues are treated, it's just like treating what you call lapa lapa and leaving headache. For goodness sake, you don't make any headway. So the Minister of uh, Power coming to tell us we should switch off our this Is it not when you don't have power that you can switch off your fridge and the air conditioning? <laughs> if you don't have power, what will you switch off? So those are the issues. So let us face the fundamental. The fact remains also that those that with license to take over these electricity companies know less to nothing about it. All they are interested in is just to increase, they have increased tariff to three, uh, by 300 to 240 to 300%. According to them on the so called Band A, that everybody is practically on, everybody is practically on the so called Band A, even we are not getting the light. They said that the, part of what the minister said was that it was going to improve power. Um, um, supply. Now they decrease the people are saying the power is no better to be So the, the, the issue as it were is that we have to go back, we look where the problem is. We have to change most of this so-called equipment. We have to rejig our architecture, our uh, the electricity generation and the, 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 uh, the, uh, the weakest link in all this is the transmission. It's not just even uh, it's not generation, it's transmission. Because if they if they're able to generate power and they cannot be able to transmit them, it, 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 it's a Because as I said, the continuous failure or collapse of national grid is that the national grid cannot be able to take enough of the, what is being pushed into. And that is a, it's a simple thing. I'm not a I'm not an electrician. I'm not an electrical engineer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm a graduate of law and I'm also a journalist. But simple common sense will tell us that this is what is happening. And want to be able to solve that. That's and without power, no country can grow. The SMC is SMPs are practically dead, totally dead. Because one of them, the average buyer you have, the organizer and the rest of them cannot even buy the, the current price of fuel. How much is it going to make? That is the problem. Uh, well, ban A people, no day, agree to not. <laughs> I, 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 I was listening to the radio. Ban A people, how no day, how far? <laughs> Me <laughs> 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 I don't even know if I have a band. Well, I was listening to the radio and it's